In this video, you will learn about applying design of experiments in pathway engineering through a case study about violating production in Asherichia coli. You will see the steps involved to incorporate design of experiments in research and how the author was able to gain a 3.2-fold increase in production by optimizing the promoter strength of five enzymes involved in the pathway in just a small number of experiments. Furthermore, you will see how design of experiments can be a powerful method to study and optimize a pathway with limited a priori knowledge. This is important when there is limited funding and time, or when the enzymes involved has not been well characterized in literature. Amy is a synthetic biologist that aims to express a novel antibiotic in the well-studied bacterium Escherichia coli. Prior experiments have shown that the pathway to produce this antibiotic involves five enzymes. Activity of the five enzymes, however, is not fully understood. To start the project, Amy constructed each of the five genes in a plasmid using promoters that are well characterized in the lab. After a few weeks, Amy managed to transform the bacterium and produce the novel antibiotic. However, the product titer is very low. The next phase of Amy's project is to increase and optimize the product concentration. As an example, let us say that Amy used five different constitutive promoters with varying strengths for each of the enzymes in her genetic construct. Amy could test different promoter strengths to modulate and tune the expression of each enzyme. One simple approach would be to choose the strongest promoter for all five of the genes to overexpress the enzymes involved in the biosynthetic pathway. This will result in the highest expression of all the enzymes involved, which will affect the concentration of the product. However, doing so is likely to result in metabolic burden on the host cell, resulting in slow growth or cell death, which will negatively impact the concentration of the final product. Instead, Amy needs to fine-tune the expression level of each gene with the right promoter. However, constructing and testing each combination of promoters for all five genes will require extensive time and cost. How can Amy easily navigate through the libraries of promoters to find the optimal combination? In a different approach, Amy could instead study the biochemistry and properties of each of the five enzymes to better understand the metabolic flux of each enzyme to guide her design. By understanding the activity of each enzyme and its role in the pathway, Amy could identify which of the five enzymes is a bottleneck and improve its expression by using a strong promoter. Amy could also identify endogenous processes that are competing for the same substrate in the pathway and reduce its expression through a knockout. This will allow Amy to better design her engineered bacterial cell by redirecting the metabolic flux to produce the desired product. But how long would this experimental study take? And how much would it cost to conduct these extra experiments? The cost to construct and test a large number of pathways limits Amy's ability to search the gene expression space and locate the desirable overproduction phenotype. Pathway engineering often comprise of an iterative cycle of pathway debottlenecking and evolutionary improvement. This often involves extensive trial and error work and requires examining large libraries of strain candidates. One of the biggest hallmark of pathway engineering is the production of artemisinin in yeast. Artemisinin is an anti-malarial drug that was discovered by Chinese scientist Tu Youyou who received a Nobel Prize for her work. The drug can naturally be extracted from the plant Artemisia annua, also known as sweet wormwood, a herb employed in Chinese traditional medicine. However, the slow growth cycle of the plant and inconsistencies in harvest have caused the supply and price of the drug to fluctuate substantially throughout the past decade. A team of researchers led by Professor Jay Kiesling aimed to solve this problem 
by producing the drug in yeast through a variety of synthetic biology approaches. The team was comprised of experts within the field who studied each of the enzymes involved in the pathway to guide their design and engineering of the pathway. With support and funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the team finally managed to produce a precursor of the drug in a reasonable titer after 12 years of extensive research and development. While it is a great story and example in the field of synthetic biology, there was extensive support and knowledge that was required for this to work. However, extensive a priori knowledge and support such as this is not always available or feasible for other labs and projects. Coming back to the previous example, Amy is working alone in this project. While she has guidance from her mentors and prior research from literature, how will she attempt to increase and optimize the production of the antibiotic? It is near impossible to conduct and test all different combinations of genetic factors in an environment with limited funding and time. Amy could instead use Design of Experiments, or DOE, to quickly screen through the main pathway components and then optimize the process for maximum production output with only a smaller number of experiments. In a similar case study to Amy, work by Xu et al. in 2017 employed Design of Experiments, or DOE, to optimize the production of violacin. Violacin is a naturally occurring pigment with interesting commercial use in cosmetics, medicines, and fabrics. The pathway to produce violacin is defined by five genes, Vio A, Vio B, Vio C, D, and E. To make use of design of experiments, the authors first constructed a T7 promoter library with transcriptional activity that spans three orders of magnitude. Promoter strength was discretized into logarithmically scaled variables where one indicated a strong promoter and a minus one indicated a weak promoter. This allowed promoter strength to be included in the DOE as a continuous factor for each of the five enzymes. The first round of DOE was used to screen for the most important genes out of the five. A placket Berman design was used to produce the following table. This table includes 12 violacine pathway arrangements with each individual gene components driven by either a strong promoter, plus one, or a weak promoter, minus one. After assembling these 12 constructs, the yield of violacine was recorded and a fit least squares model was generated. From the model, the authors found that the effects of Vio A and Vio E on violacine production was insignificant regardless of promoter strength. This information allowed them to reduce the gene expression design space by combining Vio A and Vio E with the important genes in synthetic operons, resulting in Vio AB, Vio D, and Vio EC. The number of factors have been reduced from 5 to 3 promoters. A second round of DOE was performed to find the optimal expression level of the reorganized gene cluster. For optimization, a box Benken design was used to produce the following table. Unlike before, this table includes center points at zero, where the gene components are driven by a medium promoter. By including center points, the authors were able to test for any curvature in the response. Once the yield is recorded, a fit least squares model that includes quadratic and first order interactions is generated. A prediction profiler is also included in the model allowing the author to find the optimal promoter settings and maximize the production of violacine. Through these steps, the authors were able to increase metabolic production of violacine by a 3.2-fold increase from the baseline strain. In contrast to the work of artemisinin in production, where genes are either overexpressed or knocked out, this case study shows how DOE provided insight to fine-tune expression level of each component in the pathway. This is important as simply over-expressing all the enzymes involved 
may cause burden and metabolic stress to cells, which is detrimental for cell growth and overall product titer. Furthermore, DOE allowed improvement and optimization of the pathway with limited a priori knowledge. This example simply focuses on promoter strength as a factor to change for the expression of a biomolecule. However, in the large scheme of metabolic engineering, there are other factors that could be explored which may impact production output such as plasmid vector copy number, gene topology, ribosome binding sites, the strain of organism, and growth media among many others. Increasing the number of factors to explore will undoubtedly increase the size of the design space and the number of experiments needed to gain insight. It is therefore important for users planning to use DOE to consider the biological context and resources available to determine the number and level of factors to explore. For more information and learning about DOE, you can click on the description below which will link you to one of our STIPS module. STIPS is a free online statistics course developed by JUMP that you can take and learn on your own pace. We have a dedicated module for DOE, which will dive deeper into the terminologies, experimental designs, and analysis for your experiments.